Ferragamo. A fashion story by Fashion TV. Fashion TV presents an exclusive media event of the Salvatore Ferragamo brand. Fashion TV's hostess, Hofit Golan, will take you deeper than ever into the secret world of one of the most elegant and influential brands in the world of fashion. Salvatore Ferragamo is an international renowned brand, famous for its unique style, its timeless beauty, and for the glamour that it has achieved after decades of passion and cooperation with the world's biggest stars. Everyone from Gossip Girl's Leighton Meester, Jennifer Aniston, Sharon Stone and Gwyneth Paltrow, to Madonna herself, have been seen in a Salvatore Ferragamo design. As for male celebs, the list wouldn't be complete without Gerard Butler, Hugh Jackman or Jake Gyllenhaal in a lavish Ferragamo suit. Like every empire, it has a story to tell. The brand as it is today would have not existed without one man's ambition for success, overcoming difficulties such as poverty, world war and an historic economical crisis. Carrying the philosophy one shoe, one time, one woman, he dedicated a lifetime of passion and study for creating the perfect shoe, believing that each shoe should be unique to the woman wearing them. His passion and spirit made him change the world from the 1920s until today. From one man grew an international empire that at its core lies a family. A family of four generations with a fashion gene that are considered as royalty in the fashion world. Hello Fashion TV, this is day three of the Milan Fashion Week. At my back, the Salvatore Ferragamo logo. The clothes are so colorful and beautiful and summery. We are backstage at Ferragamo. I really enjoy to do Salvatore, it's not the first time, so I'm really happy. I love it, I love it. I'm an old style uh, guy and uh, super happy that today you started this new process. Super sophisticated and classic. We always expect a lot from Ferragamo show. Salvatore Ferragamo has always been known as one of the most important designers in Italian fashion, and the brand's runway shows have been nothing short of spectacular. A representation of Italian luxury as an ideal of elegance and timeless beauty in the fashion world where shoes are the artifact that keeps it all in balance. beautiful building in Florence here with Ferruccio Ferragamo. Thank you so much for having us. It's wonderful to be here celebrating 80 years of Ferragamo. Take me back to, to the beginning of the brand. Salvatore Ferragamo's shoemaking days started at the age of 11, where he worked as a cobbler's apprentice in Naples. My father dreamed to make shoes and uh, his parents, my grandparents, did not want him to be a shoemaker. Thank God he won. 
because otherwise we wouldn't be here probably. And Daddy starts this uh, dream from his uh, very, very young, making a pair of shoes for his sister uh, for the Holy Communion. They, she did not have the money for uh, a, a new pair of white shoes. When he left for uh, his village, he was um, 15, 16, looking for to make shoes. Salvatore Ferragamo's precise handiwork and exquisite designs have become more than just an item of footwear, but a masterful expression of fashion. Ranging from the strikingly bizarre to timeless classics, Ferragamo's talent of blending comfort with style was the dream of every woman. I was actually in your museum, and I'm looking at shoes that are from the 40s, the 50s, and I think, actually, I think I have something in my closet that I just bought that's pretty similar, and that's great vision for the future. There's a really an appreciation for, for the craftsmanship. We had uh, artisans that actually went to the expo in Shanghai and uh, were presenting that the ability of actually making shoes by hand. It was fascinating to see how many people actually wanted to see this. Have you all seen the shoes? Yeah. They're, they're great. Yeah. They're, I think they're staple. Every man needs a Salvatore Ferragamo shoe. That ability to see a product which still today our shoes are made by hand is what we do. It's really what the customer really today appreciates and, and values from Ferragamo. Today, the Ferragamo legacy lives on with each shoe handmade in Florence by a staff of trained artisans that work by Salvatore's inherently high standards. I love shoes. I have hundreds of shoes. I love shoes. Um, they also put me in a better mood. That seems very silly to say, but it kind of is true. You know, shoes, you put on a pair of heels and you feel like, oh, I feel better. I just can't get enough. Customer today wants to be able to find the product that is made only for her. The ability to cater to, to a specific request, uh, um, we're increasing also the made to order programs, so to really create shoes made for a specific request and uh, have something which is personalized. Women, one thing we don't like is to walk into a room and see another woman wearing what we're wearing. Exactly. And I just can't get enough, and I just can't get enough. Every time I think of you, I know. Everything, every single shoe that you can see, it's inspired. Even the most tricky, the heels, uh, the colors, uh, the materials, uh, it's fantastic. Known as a shoemaker, Salvatore Ferragamo, a visionary craftsman, and the man who created some of the most iconic shoes in Hollywood and the world, was and is a reference for shoemaking. His story, talent and technique still inspire today's designers and shoemakers. What he did, it's all. Everything that you see today is more or less inspired by what he did. To have something that goes that back and still very current today. Your, your grandfather was a visionary and created some of the most iconic shoes in the world. As a woman, I could tell you, shoes are beautiful, but they hurt. And your father <laughs> cared to save us from the pain that we suffer from wearing beautiful shoes that destroy our feet. It's very interesting, the fact you, you, you are saying that uh, shoes hurts. My they father really do. <laughs> <laughs> My father didn't thought that the shoes should hurt. In fact, uh, the idea was to make shoes very advanced, very innovative but comfortable and that is one of the leitmotiv that we have continued in the years and that we still uh, uh, base our uh, compromise of between fashion, innovation, comfort, quality, uh, material and, and trying to please our customer. 
Uh, this is the reason why the Ferragamo shoes are very comfortable because uh, Ferragamo introduced inside the shoes a special steel shank to support the arch of the foot. Which is generous of him to care about our feet since he didn't have to wear these shoes. <laughs> Do you think that your father knew when he was creating the cage shoe or some of these heels that he was creating history? Well, I think he was pretty convinced that uh, his shoes were uh, special. And when he created the wedge, uh, which he made in many color, many shaped, empty, with platform, without, and inside he express all creativity, which was creativity and done for the comfort of the shoes. A fashion story by Fashion TV. Before movies had sound, Salvatore Ferragamo's shoes spoke from the silent screen. He immigrated to the United States from Italy in 1914 and within a few short years set up his shop in the Hollywood Hills. He did not have a huge budget of communication, of marketing, but just word of mouth, they all uh, uh, world of Hollywood went to his shop uh, so much that at one point he could not cope. Uh. It is here that he became known as the shoemaker to the stars, designing iconic heels that were worn both on and off screen by the world's most glamorous celebrities. I think my grandfather was a marketing genius. In the early 20s, he actually moved to Hollywood to make the first shoes for the first film that were coming out of Hollywood. From there, the celebrities actually became his customers that wore his shoes not only on the set, but also off the set. Everyone from Marilyn Monroe to Audrey Hepburn, Sophia Loren and Judy Garland were among his most avid clientele. I believe Marilyn Monroe would order shoes from your grandfather 25 pairs at a time. Yes, she was a, a fan of Ferragamo. Would you mind playing this? Marilyn Monroe famously said, give a girl the right shoes and she can conquer the world. It was no secret that Ferragamo was her favorite designer. Ferragamo's Hollywood boot shop attracted cinema's greatest directors and stars. He was actually a, very much somebody that wanted to understand the personality that would come here in Palazzo Ferroni and uh, he would understand what they needed, what they wanted. Else but you. We actually have an exhibition now that actually shows uh, the creation that were made for her by my grandfather. I couldn't aspire to anything higher. Here we have beautiful red started shoes that were created especially for Marilyn for her movie Some Like It Hot. Absolutely beautiful even in today's time. I wanna be loved by you, just you. Nobody else but you. I wanna be loved by you. The diddly 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 dum. Boop boop doop. If you can go back in time, is there a particular celebrity that you would love to have dressed head to toe? Well, I think uh, Audrey Hepburn is a, a sign of natural elegance. Marilyn Monroe is a unique woman, um, real woman. Marilyn Monroe would choose a very high heel. Audrey Hepburn, because of her ballet, would choose usually a flat heel, also because she was quite tall. So this ability of actually making shoes that were made one shoe, one last, for one, uh, one lady. These shoes, beautiful flat sandals, were made for Audrey Hepburn. And you can kind of see the timeless elegance that Audrey had. Salvatore Ferragamo is credited as designer of Audrey Hepburn's ballerina pump, which was featured in the movie Sabrina, and is today recognized as a brand signature. He is the creative mastermind behind the ruby slippers that Judy Garland wore as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, and so fulfilling his dream that every woman may be shooed like a princess, and a princess may be shooed like a fairy queen. 
If you are successful in America, I think you are successful in most part of the world. In 1939, Salvatore Ferragamo bought the 13th century Palazzo Spiniferoni in Florence to house the shop and company headquarters. Ferragamo had moved his business back to Italy to help increase shoemaking production, where he trained a staff of talented craftsmen that could proudly stamp each new shoe with the handmade in Italy mark. His dream was to dress the customer from shoe to head. And I think we have followed that uh, wish. Salvatore Ferragamo, a fashion story by Fashion TV. There is a, a lot of passion behind uh, a family that uh, in love uh, of what my father did. Uh, Salvatore Ferragamo's dream was always that his family would honor his talents and one day work for the company. He also dreamt that his brand would evolve from making ladies' shoes to a total look collection. And though Salvatore's legacy is a lot to live up to, his wife Wanda, six children and grandson James have filled the role, taking design, managerial and expansion roles under their wings. I think I have been lucky to find something already started. I have my father start from zero. Behind the Ferragamo there is a wonderful family, all devoted and all dedicated to this company and to the passion of uh, continuing this dream. My father thought that four months holiday as we had in those days were far too much. So he said, I will bring you with me in the office and you should learn how the warehouse, you should learn how to make shoes and you should learn about the leather, you should, you know, all what is involved. And I did, I came with daddy. I, in fact, I love coming to work. I didn't like study, but I love working. And daddy used to give me a little pocket money for uh, making me think that I was uh, you know, I, he was getting a return. In fact, I was making a lot of confusion. But I did <laughs> learn how to make uh, shoes, which I, you know, when you learn them so young, uh, you never forget. Uh. The Ferragamo family continues to build a global empire in Salvatore Ferragamo's name. Today, it is his son, Ferruccio Ferragamo, who currently stands as the president of the company. I really always had this bug uh, for the family business. It's something that I always enjoyed, even when I was very young. Um, I was nine years old, the first time I was actually working in the warehouse, putting the shoes in the boxes. And uh, so at the end of the logistic uh, phase, then I also worked on the production line, learning how to make pairs of shoes. Uh, I'm in the 1990s, I was working actually in Beverly Hills, where we opened our store there. And uh, that was a, a great experience for me, really trying to understand the Ferragamo customer. I made, in fact, uh, at the age of uh, 13, 12, 13, a pair of shoes for my mother. Not that I've seen her wearing that, but um, I did finish them. If we were to go and to have dinner with the Ferragamo family, around the kitchen table with the grandma and your father and yourself and the kids, is fashion much of the subject? Well, it is a family business and uh, the family and the business uh, do intertwine quite a lot. Uh, but then there's also a focus on the, on the family, so on the, on, on like, uh, on the little ones, on the, on the family as uh, uh, the different experiences that everybody's going through, or is it a university, or is it going to school, or the little one who's just started walking, and it's a, we have such a diverse, we're almost 70. We are a family very united that we confront each other. We are, yes, we discuss about uh, strategy, point of view, market, uh, uh, talk to my mother, mom is never, uh, never happy. She always uh, <laughs> think, uh, said, uh, how many shops do we have? 600 shops in the world? We can double the turnover. <laughs> set rules uh, because we are many many descendant of Salvatore and Vandes that only three in total can join the company 
and if they have certain skills. We had to have rules and my father, the first responsibility was to try and find a way to make sure that the corporation would always be uh, attracting professional management. In the family we are uh, uh, relative, but in the business we are business. So the limit was decided on three and to become one of the three you have to have a university degree, um, suggested also a master, have work experience with other companies and I think that that's really very important because you want to make sure that the company is always competitive with brands that maybe are not anymore part of a family uh, dynasty but that still uh, you're competing against. I have a son James and his great uh, support from the company, I hope he doesn't hear me speaking about him, I don't want that it goes to his head. <laughs> Ferragamo truly is 100% made in Italy. You don't sacrifice on quality in the detail. Can you tell me a little bit about that? We are very proud of being uh, uh, made in Italy. Uh, made in Italy means uh, quality, means craftsman. We have made that uh, choice because uh, we have wonderful people in our company and in the company that produce for us and we would never let them down. And we think also that Made in Italy is like a second brand beside the name Ferragamo. I think is, is a sign of quality, of craftsman and all things that are very appreciated by the market. Very proud uh, that we are uh, in Italy, we live in Italy, we are very Italian. Everything that we do is made in Italy, and I think my father would be just very proud. What's the plan for the future for Ferragamo? Where do you see the brand going? I think uh, we are um, expanding in new market, wherever there is a possibility, a uh, new place where uh, to serve uh, our customer. In 1989, a Hong Kong boutique marks the brand's expansion into Asia, and today, the House of Ferragamo is a well-renowned luxury brand worldwide. Today, Asia is maybe even half of the Ferragamo business. Can you tell me about your vision for Asia? Asia has always been very important. Uh, my grandfather actually was one of the first ones in the, in the 50s to open up uh, the Ferragamo to Asia. We were lucky to be, I think, among the very few brands that uh, have the courage to start that market and believe in that market. Today, Ferragamo have in Great China almost 100 shops uh, and very challenging, very interesting. For us, it's really a matter of catering to a customer, to a, a population that really understands and wants that crafted product, that uh, artisanal product uh, made in Italy. Ferragamo is, is known to the world as a family brand. Can you tell me about the decision to bring in Mr. Norsa into the brand and his impact on the Ferragamo brand since joining? The market wanted to have a company that have a CEO that was also uh, not part of the family member. I think that also gave a credibility of a family business that wanted to move towards more of a corporation. The family house was determined to carry on the legacy and innovate, branched out into men and women's clothing, handbags, silk scarves, ties and fragrances. Also, you have hotel in Florence, the Gallery Art, mm -hmm. and other hotels. Tell us a little bit about that, branching into hotels and other ventures outside of just fashion. 
Well, I think that uh, hotels today are very much part also of an experience uh, that is quite linked also to fashion and recently we've decided to also expand into hotels with the possibility of, of providing something which is very uh, local but with an international feeling. The family legacy does not just stop at fashion. In 1995, the Ferragamos entered into the world of hospitality and are the creative force behind the award-winning Lugarno collection. Leonardo Ferragamo, the son of Salvatore, is the president of the group of luxury hotels, villas, and residences that can be found in Florence, Rome, and Tuscany. Salvatore Ferragamo, a fashion story by Fashion TV. Has there been any milestone memories for you, like a specific fashion show or event that really is warm to your heart that you can share with us? Well, I think that one of the, one of the important milestones that we had last year was uh, the presentation that we did, uh, the fashion show that we did at Louvre. On June 12, 2012, Giornetti presented the Salvatore Ferragamo Resort 2013 Runway Collection at the Louvre in Paris. This is the first fashion show ever to be presented inside the gallery walls. We had the opportunity to participate in the restoration of the Sant'Anna, which is a very famous painting worldwide made by Leonardo da Vinci. This opportunity also gave us the possibility to do a fashion show inside the Louvre, which was the first brand to ever do a fashion show. The grand event captured the attention of Ferragamo-clad celebs like Hilary Swank, Frida Pinto, Leighton Meester, Karolina Kurkova, and over 500 other guests. History combining with history must have been a very magical moment. A very magical moment, and um, also that what we were able to present there was a collection that was again very innovative and very much very Ferragamo. Another milestone that I was able to share with you was 75 year anniversary of the Bond Street store in London. It is timeless, it is elegant, it's chic, it's cool, it's modern. Most of the pieces, if not every piece, goes from day to night quite easily and I think that's what makes a brand like Ferragamo quite modern. We have organized a dinner in a very cold arcade, but with a beautiful setting outside here with 10,000 red roses. London has always been a very important city for Ferragamo. Uh, 75 years ago, we actually opened in Old Bond Street, and today, uh, this year, we actually we restored it. I've got with me such a gorgeous lady. Can you please introduce yourself to our viewers? Okay, sure, I'm Olivia Grant. I'm an actress and we're in the Ferragamo store. And you're looking lovely, so first tell me what you're wearing. This is Ferragamo. It's all Ferragamo actually. Belt. You can't go wrong in Ferragamo. You look Jessica Alba, you look absolutely stunning. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. I mean, I would consider you one of the most beautiful women on the planet. Now we're at the Ferragamo launch. Ferragamo is just so timelessly elegant and beautiful. What do you think about the brand? I think exactly that. Do you find that musicians inspire fashion these days? The musicians and the artists like Lady Gaga or Anybody exactly. inspire yes. fashion today? Certainly, I have no doubt that uh, fashion comes from there, from uh, you know the life, from you know the beautiful singer and beautiful song, uh, and certainly and also songs are affected, I think, by fashion. In designing and coming up with different collections, 
Where do you draw on inspirations every season? We have a, a creative director, so Massimiliano Giornetti, which is our creative director for the brands uh, since uh, spring summer 2011, so really from 2010, has, uh, has given us uh, really a, a, an ability to really focus both the men's and the women's category in terms of the creative input that he gives us. And then based on that theme, based on the, on the color that he would like to select for a specific selection, we research together with the designers of the shoes and of the handbags to come out and, and provide uh, uh, options that really match his, uh, his, uh, his theme for the collection. Massimiliano is very much trying to create that timeless uh, aspect to everything we do, which is, it's timeless, but it's very, it's very uh, worked and very refined. We really go through the collection, every single piece, uh, numerous times together with him to really try and make it what he desires and to their uh, small details, really all a matter of details. The response of the uh, consumers in, uh, in the store is always very uh, difficult. It was very beautiful as usual, it's Ferragamo. Really nice colors, beautiful colors. Something that you don't expect but you will find there. How would you describe the Ferragamo lady? She is very sure of herself. She knows what she wants. I was really dreaming about a woman very free, very independent in, uh, in the spirit and also in the, in the attitude. Always trying to give them a good reason to buy Ferragamo product uh, and never letting them down for what they expect. Uh. Ferragamo, that ability to really to be innovative every season, to really come up with something which is new, it's a, it's a fashion, but it has a longevity. In this moment, I think it's extremely uh, important to uh, make people dreaming and uh, to come back to something that's more intimate and uh, even intelligent. I think I did it again I made you believe We're more than just friends Salvatore Ferragamo's creative director Massimiliano Giornetti believes that it's important to connect with the reality and the spirit of our era focusing on the moments in which we all live through Every season he is creating a story of a man and a woman in defining the story of Italian lifestyle Italian luxury casual wear seems to be the name of the game for the Salvatore Ferragamo team today. Creative director Massimiliano Giornetti knows exactly how to team the traditional Ferragamo DNA with an Italian leisure wear spirit. Giornetti has helped return the brand to its roots. Next future move, what's the plan for the future for Ferragamo? Where do you see the brand going in the future? We believe in the brand. We think the brand uh, has a great potential. Um, I think uh, we're not planning to make uh, a revolution, but certainly a lot of evolution. Okay. Ferragamo, a fashion story by Fashion TV.